Hello TL Travelers and welcome back to the TL Travel YouTube channel. Today we are talking about Costa Rica, our trip to Costa Rica, and specifically the city of Tamarindo. So if you have not already seen our vlogmas footage from our Tamarindo trip or from our Nicaragua trip prior to that, definitely at some point backtrack and watch those because those are amazing and they're chock full of little tips and tricks for traveling in the area. But for now, we are going to take this day to talk about my thoughts on Tamarindo and hopefully give you an idea if you're thinking about traveling to Tamarindo, uh, whether or not it's the spot for you. So if you are interested, hit that subscribe button, that like button, all of those fun things and stay tuned because we're jumping into it right now. So I'm going to switch it up a little bit for this video and start with the cons, if you will, because most of my review has a lot to do with people's perception of Tamarindo and yeah, what travelers tend to say about Tamarindo uh, going in. When it comes to travel in Costa Rica, one of the things that you will hear so much about Tamarindo from travelers who have traveled extensively in the area is that Tamarindo is the most touristy spot and that you should avoid it and why would you stay in Tamarindo when you could stay in all of these other beautiful places, etc., etc., etc. And in a lot of ways, I do see their point. If you are someone who has done a ton of travel and you are looking for somewhere off the beaten path to explore, this probably isn't the place for you. However, I am one of those people who will always tell first time travelers to an area that touristy places and popular um, like excursions and things like that are touristy and are popular for a reason. So I do think that it's a shame that first time travelers to a location will often skip out on an experience or skip out on a area or a region just because well traveled or seasoned travelers tell them that it is just not worth it. It kind of is and I'll tell you why I feel that way. So now on to the pros. One of the things that myself and my TL travelers often say that they love about Tamarindo is just the sheer, 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 blah, 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 is just the sheer convenience of it. So if you're looking for a spot that is gonna have a wide variety of restaurants, pubs, nightlife, excursions, maybe car rentals, shopping, all of those things available to you close by, Tamarindo really is great for that. It's conveniently located from the airport in Liberia, so it's very easy to just fly into the north and get to the coast and have a spot with everything in it right there, you know, in, in just an hour, an hour and a half. It also makes a very convenient home base for traveling outward and visiting other locations and doing day trips and things like that in the north. So if you are more of an adventure traveler and you were looking for somewhere to have as your home base that has all of the conveniences around, but still adventure out and do things that are a little bit more off the beaten track or experience things beyond the city, then this is also a great home base for a traveler like you. And then on that same wavelength of convenience, uh, accommodations are very convenient there as well. Now you will find that accommodations in Tamarindo can be a little pricier than if you are staying, say, off in the middle of nowhere. However, you do want to keep in mind the amount of money that you're going to be spending on taxis and things of that nature should you decide that you're going to stay outside of the city and then want to come into the city for restaurants, nightlife, all that kind of thing. So accommodations in Tamarindo, while they can be a little bit pricier, there's also a wider variety of accommodation types available to you. So if you saw the videos from the start of my vlogmas this year, you would have seen that we spent a week in Tamarindo. We stayed in more luxurious accommodations, sort of up and out of the city so that we could look out over the water and have peace and quiet and all of that kind of stuff, and then shuttle down into the city and have everything at our convenience anytime that we wanted. But there are also a ton of backpacker accommodations and hostels available in the area, smaller boutique hotels, mid-range boutique hotels, Airbnbs, VRBO, all of that stuff. Whatever style of accommodation that you need, you can find it in Tamarindo. So that's kind of it for me for this video and my take on Tamarindo for you guys. I know that I sort of structured this video a little bit differently than my other like our thoughts on videos so I hope that it wasn't too jumbled and all over the place. Please keep in mind that at the end of the day this is just you know my opinion on Tamarindo and some thoughts pulled from travelers in the past and all that kind of thing but obviously people are going to have differing opinions and that is okay by me. So if you have a different opinion on Tamarindo or you have some tips and tricks for traveling in the area, favorite things, favorite spots to stay, all that fun stuff, feel free to leave it in the comments below and I will always respond because I love connecting with you guys. 
Don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. We post new travel content every Thursday and Sunday. And we are going to be starting our travels for 2018 in Bali and Thailand, so you won't want to miss it. And I think that's it. So until next time, stay great, travel safe, and I'll see you in my next video.